Hi, I'm Dr. Cassie Majestic from the UC Irvine Department of Emergency Medicine. It's October, and with Halloween fast approaching, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some helpful tips to make your Halloween safe. One of the staples of Halloween is pumpkin carving, so here are a few tips to stay safe. You should use a pumpkin carving kit instead of your typical kitchen knives. You can get these for a few dollars from most stores around town. These are special carving tools that have dull edges to make pumpkin carving more safe, but still lets you carve awesome pumpkins. Even though these are safer, you should leave the carving to parents and older children. Little ones can help by drawing the designs on the pumpkin with a marker. Instead of using a candle to light the pumpkin, consider using a flashlight or a glow stick. If you do use a candle, a votive candle is one of the safer options. Also, when you use candles, make sure the pumpkin is on a sturdy table and away from any curtains and other objects that can catch on fire. This could be anything from decorative cobwebs, banners, or any other Halloween decor that you have in the vicinity. <laughs> also, don't leave the candles burning unsupervised. When trick-or-treating, remember to choose your trick-or-treating neighborhood wisely. Avoid overly crowded areas and busy streets. A responsible adult or parent should accompany small children at all times. This is very important because children often choose to take the shortest route when traveling from one house to the next. Sometimes this means they dart between parked cars and they don't use crosswalks properly. Please remind your children that cars will not always slow down for them and they should stay by your side at all times. Also remind your kids to never respond to an unfamiliar pedestrian or driver that attempts to call out to them. Warn your children about stray animals and even pets in the homes where they will be trick-or-treating. Discourage them from petting any animal without first asking the owner. Many shopping centers or malls have designated trick-or-treat times in the late afternoon or early evening. This can be a good alternative if you're unsure about the safety of your neighborhood for trick-or-treating. Please make sure that one person in the trick-or-treating group has a flashlight and make sure there are fresh batteries in the flashlight. One of the most fun parts of Halloween is dressing up. Um, when creating your child's Halloween costume, remember to look for costumes made from flame-resistant fabric. Also consider adding some reflective tape or bright colors to the costume so they are more visible to motorists. Check the length of your child's Halloween costume to make sure there is no tripping hazard. Please keep in mind that some masks can limit or block eyesight, making it more difficult for your child or yourself to see hazards. You can consider non-toxic makeup or hats and wigs as alternatives. We really recommend against using decorative contact lenses. They often claim to be one size fits all and they don't require an eye specialist to purchase them. These type of lenses, however, can cause eye pain, inflammation, scratches to the surface of the eye, and infections. Not only can they be uncomfortable, but they can also result in vision loss. If your children are older and would like to enjoy trick-or-treating without you, um, it is important to have a route planned. Review this route with your children prior to them leaving and set a curfew, a strict curfew, for them to arrive home. Encourage them to travel in large groups and make sure they use the buddy system to be sure that no one is left behind. Remind them that they should never go inside of a house or a car for a treat. Also, most importantly, plan for them to carry a cell phone in case of emergencies. For all you health food nuts out there, avoid large servings of candy and opt for non-food items, such as crayons, coloring books, and pens for the trick-or-treaters visiting your home. You could also consider healthier edible treats, such as granola bars, individually packaged pretzels, or fruit snacks. Feed your own children a healthy meal prior to trick-or-treating, so they will be less likely to overeat candy. Inspect your children's candy when they arrive home to ensure proper packaging. 
also discourage them from accepting homemade or improperly packaged treats. If your kids are really good trick-or-treaters and make out with tons of treats, remember that you can ration out those treats for the days and the weeks after Halloween. You can also enjoy some of those yourself. <laughs> If your adult Halloween fun includes alcohol intake, please remember to drink responsibly. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration survey, one in five American adults have driven after drinking. So remember to have a known designated driver or call a cab if you have plans to drink alcohol. Even if your Halloween plans don't include drinking, be extra careful if you're driving on the roads. Foot traffic will be higher on Halloween evening so be cautious near crosswalks and parked cars in residential areas. Stay off the roads if possible, because one less car on the road will decrease the chance of motor vehicle accidents. So most importantly this Halloween, you should remember to have fun. And following these simple tips to a safer Halloween may keep you one step farther from a visit to the emergency department. Once again, I'm Dr. Cassie Majestic from the UC Irvine Department of Emergency Medicine. We thank you for your time and have a happy and safe Halloween.